Jack, man, definitely have to, you know, uh, officials, referees get so much criticism. Definitely got to give credit where it's due. You did a hell of a job Saturday night with the Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury fight. Um, is Thank what you. you're very welcome, very welcome. Is it a little? Was it a little bit intimidating? That's six nine against six seven. I don't know how tall you are, but I can see you weren't nowhere near their size. Um, no, it wasn't intimidating because I've refereed guys that size. In fact, I was fortunate enough to referee Wilder against Drew Hoppus. Mm -hmm. Hoppus was bigger than Wilder. And, um, you know, I've got a lot of fights under my belt. And uh, I've got a lot of heavyweights under my belt. So it wasn't intimidating at all. It was actually exciting. I couldn't wait to get in there. It has to be a difference, um, Jack, when you referee in guys that size as opposed to smaller guys because I, I noticed the way and you always break guys the same but you let guys do a little more in certain situations how important is that for you to understand the size understand the range and things like that going into fights like this I'm really glad you understand it I'm really glad you get it there's definitely a difference um, the, the bigger guys are going to be slower the faster guys I've got to work a little bit further because I got to stay out of their way they can make quick moves and you get caught up. Where with the bigger guys, I can stay a little bit closer because they don't move as fast. Uh -huh. And breaking them and all that other stuff, it's just that the heavier they are, the slower it gets. And those, the bigger guys get tired. You know, it's a lot of weight and a lot of muscle they're pushing around. And um, one of the things I will do, honestly, when the older guys in the later rounds start to hold, I'll give them two or three seconds extra to rest a little bit because the fans want to see a fight, you know, and I'll, and I'll just break them a little slower and let these guys get the rest that they're both looking for. Uh -huh. If one guy's holding and the other guy's not trying to get out, it's telling me they're both trying to take a break. You know what I mean? For sure. Definitely. No, definitely. You said you were excited to get in the ring uh, Saturday night. Uh, I, no one could have predicted could have predicted it was going to be that type of fight. Did you feel a certain synergy that we were in the in, in store for something special that night? Uh, I knew something was gonna have, good was going to happen because there was a lot of tension and a lot of energy in the air during the weigh-in mm -hmm. and during my rules meeting with both of them and then the pre-fight instruction. Both of these guys looked in great shape and they both came to fight. Heavyweights. What more could you ask for? I knew something good was going to come out of it. I have to ask you, man, because it's been all over the internet as f in terms of what did you see in Tyson Fury's eyes? What did you see when you were over him counting? Because the way he fell, most guys wouldn't even give a count, or if so, they would be very weary of letting him continue. What did you see in Fury that made you, once he got up, make sure he was okay and then let him continue? Well, man, Absolutely. All right. The first part is, I don't know what other guys would or wouldn't have done, but, you know, I was evaluating these guys throughout the whole fight, and one thing I knew going into the 12th round, they, they boxed their hearts out, they, they punched, you know, threw a lot of punches and hit each other, but there wasn't a lot of heavy damage taken by either guy. Mm -hmm. They both came into the 12th round tired, but not extremely hurt. So... When he got hit, and he went down hard, man, that was an unbelievable knockdown. There's two things that went through my mind. Number one, always count a champion out. And number two, give this guy the benefit of doubt. Let's see what, let's see how he's doing. So when I went down to count, I was, I don't know if you saw it on the tape, or well, you noticed it. I don't know if you noticed it, but not only did I get down, I scooted in so I'd be right above his face uh -huh. so he could see my hands hear my voice and I said two, three four and he was um, he was grimacing you know what I mean is he was his eyes and his cheeks he was grimacing so I knew he was awake mm -hmm. and then when I said five his eyes popped open like I startled him you know what I mean wow and he was awake and then he rolled over got up and said I'm okay Jack I'm okay or whatever he said you know and I said <laughs> You want to continue? He says, yes. And he put his arms on my shoulders. I pushed his arms off and I said, walk over here and come back to me. Show me you're okay. And he did. And we let it go. That's sort of a new thing, Jack. I, I was speaking to a buddy of mine and it used to be walk straight to me. Give me your gloves. 
a while back it kind of started where you guys started making them take a lateral step. Why is, I mean, I understand why that is, but could you just elaborate on what the importance of making fighters take that lateral step and then coming back to you? Great question, and I'm glad you're going to put this out there to people. A 10 count doesn't mean 10 seconds. It's, it's a referee's opportunity to make sure that the fighter who is hurt can intelligently defend himself because you know he's wounded prey. Uh-huh. So we want to make sure he's intelligent. He can intelligently defend himself because I'm about to let a guy, a hurricane, come running across the ring and try to finish this guy. Definitely, you know? definitely. And in the old days, we used to wipe their gloves and send them through. Then people started making them walk to see their gate. And people were making them walk in a straight line. Well, any drunk could walk in a straight line. That's true. So what the doctors, the ringside physicians started teaching us is that if, if a guy's been hit and his gait is off, it's very hard to hide it when you make them change direction. So we started making them walk to the left and the right, so they have to change direction to either accent their stagger or demonstrate that they're in full control of their body. That's what we do. That's what I was doing. And obviously, fight fans are passionate. They're saying it's buying fighters time. And it wasn't just Saturday night. Like I said, I've seen that a lot recently. And it's for fighter safety. Yep. And you know what? I got to be honest. I don't really care what they say because I'm going to do what's right for the for the boxing and for the fighter safety, period. Absolutely. When so you can help by educating. No, for sure. No, without a doubt, I'm glad we were able to, to put that out there because, like I said, I've noticed it's been done and I understand the meaning of it. I just know some people hadn't heard it, it described or explained in that manner, so I'm glad we were able to do that. When you're going into a fight, Jack, say like Tyson Fury, uh, Deontay Wilder, Tyson Fury fell almost exactly the way he fell when Steve Cunningham uh, knocked him out, down years ago. Obviously, it's a much bigger puncher, but he fell almost exactly the same way. He popped up almost exactly the same way. Do you study fighters to see the patterns of when they're hurt or when they're staggered or when they get knocked down, or was that just all instinct Saturday night? I absolutely study them uh, um, for a lot of reasons. And, you know, something you ought to know is when I went into the dressing room to give pre-fight instructions, I had a list of five things talk to Tyson Fury about, and three things to talk to Deontay Wilder Deontay about that I absolutely would not accept that I saw them doing in their prior fights. When I study the fighters, I want to get a baseline on them. I want to find out what's normal for them. So during the fight, when they're getting fatigued and they're getting damaged, they fall away from that baseline, and I know, I can tell when they're hurt by how far away from that baseline they are. Okay. It goes into my decision-making process. Uh-huh. I always study the fighters. That's amazing stuff, man. A long-time boxing uh, matchmaker, Ryan Katz, uh, tweeted that you've asserted yourself as the best referee in boxing. Now, I know you, you have a job to do, and the accolades are great, but you can't pay too much attention to it. But it has to be a great feeling to know you're doing things the right way and people are actually taking notice of that. You know, it's a wonderful feeling because, um, you know, look, everybody in every sport and every adventure business in life runs into obstacles. I've been held back uh, in boxing for political reasons. I've had my, my mountains to climb. So, uh, and I live by a philosophy, different philosophies that sometimes people look at me like I'm crazy, other referees. Mm-hmm. My philosophies are never violate safety and always do what's best for boxing. And, wow. you know, I get guys that go, no, we all got to do it the same way. Uh, it's got to be like this. And I don't agree with the, the letter of the law. Definitely. I agree with the spirit of the law. And last night was a perfect example of the spirit of the law. Now, he went down, and the way he fell and he hit his head, there's guys that will say, I don't care, I'm counting them out. Well, guess what? I went by the spirit of the law. And I said, I'm going to give them a chance, and, and look what happened. Absolutely. That Absolutely. was the easy way out, Percy. The easy way out would have been to wave that fight off. But you don't pay me to, to do the easy thing. You pay me to do what's right. And I, that's, what I, that's what I did. I actually tweeted that. I said, uh, most refs or any other refs, or I forgot how I worded it, would be waving their hands over Tyson Fury's face 
And uh, it would have took away from the magic, I think, that happened Saturday night. Although, obviously, you have people what, who weren't happy with the draw. It, it, him surviving and finishing that fight, especially the way he got up and finished, it, it created the magic of everyone wanting to see a rematch. And, and you're definitely appreciated for that. Uh, thank you. Jack is... That's my philosophy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Do what's best. Never mind my safety. But when you can, do what's best for boxing. You absolutely did that, man. I appreciate the time, Jack. I look forward to catching up with you more and definitely uh, look forward to seeing you in more big fights, my man. Thank you.